Previously on Saving Christmas, Sleigh Bells. Blip, Wiry, Skipperson, and his elite team of Special Forces Black Ops elves were on a cocoa break, when all heckerdoodles broke loose in the workshop. Unknown invaders blew up part of the workshop. Just over 24 hours until the big day and the big man's sleigh had been stolen. The team tracked the sleigh on the Global Present tracking system to an abandoned toy lab facility that hadn't been in use since the early 70s. The team has explored most of the facility, and found it infested with naughty toys and wild creatures. They encountered a rare non-violent naughty toy, an old ragged Rory doll, who told them where the sleigh thieves had gone to. December 23rd, 2359 hours. Rory was right. The map showed a network of old roads, and one of the routes led to a nearby village nestled up against a mountain. As we looked at the map, my radio crackled. Alpha Team! Alpha Team! Come in, Alpha Team! This is Sergeant Crumbles. We picked up your locator beacon. Are you in need of assistance? Negative, Sergeant, I replied. The beacon is marking where we found the fat man's sack. It's still full to bursting. Whatever these naughties want, it isn't the presence. Affirmative. We'll send a recovery team for the sack. Any luck on the sleigh? We have a lead. What we don't have is a ride. The snowstorm looks like it's getting worse. Can the helicopter get through it? Negative. We'll send beta team to you. They're on recon snowmobiles. You should be able to double up and get to your target. We'll hold the fort until then. Alpha team out. I turned to Cammy and said, Cambo, blow open the lock on the front doors. We need a door big enough to drag the big man's sack through. Yes, sir, she said as she spun around and marched back to the entry room. We all plugged our ears, and with a quick, fire in the hole, from her, and an earth-shattering kaboom, the front door blew open. It didn't take long before we heard the whine of snowmobiles in the distance. All right, everybody, let's go grab Santa's sack and drag it up here. We're on a time budget here, and I want everything gift-wrapped for Beta Team when they get here. It didn't take long for Beta Team to show up. As a unit, they skidded to a halt in front of the door. The team leader took off her snow goggles. Beta team, reporting in. Wiry, you look like you've been through Heckerdoodles. You have no idea, Hawkeye, I said. Jenna Hawkeye Blippy was the leader of Beta team. She was the team's sniper, with a long-range slingshot on her arm. It wasn't as powerful as Benji's candy cane crossbow, but the range was just as good, and it was a lot quicker to reload. There's been a change of plans, she said. The storm has gotten worse. Air travel is out of the question, which means that we need to bring the sack back now. I'll send the rest of my team on two snowmobiles back to base, and I'll have to ride double with one of you to get wherever it is you're going. Happy to have you along, I said. Does that mean that nobody else can make it out here? Not soon enough. Okay, then. Let's ride. Shade, Doc, you two are driving. Longshot, Cambo, you two are riding shotgun. The rest of Beta Team dragged the sack between two of the vehicles and started lashing it on. Everybody grab your cinnamon buns, we're rolling out. I hopped on one of the snowmobiles and Jenna settled in behind me. I'm riding shotgun with you, Wiry. You're a lousy shot on a good day. Can't imagine you're much better when you're driving. She might be able to hide in the snow just as well as Shade and Longshot can, but that girl is no good at hiding her feelings. She's crazy about me. I revved the engine and saw the long shot was settling in behind Shade, and Cambo had a fresh candy cane resting on her lip, and a fresh rock salt clip in her marshmallow gun. No time to stop and hang ornaments, folks. Let's ride. I revved the engine and left a stream of flying snow in my wake. Santa shorts, yelled Hawkeye. Give a girl a little warning next time. The visibility was getting worse, and the storm was starting to interfere with the global present tracking system in the snowmobiles. I tried to align myself with the outline of the mountain we were heading towards on the horizon. But at a certain point, even that faded from view. Eventually, I called out on the radio. All right, kiddies, let's stop for a minute. I think I'll need to fiddle with our GPS units to boost the signal. We're no good to the fat man if we get lost on the way out there. Sure thing, boss, came an immediate reply from Cambo. I slowed down when I saw a convenient ridge to park next to, the best shelter from the snow that I could see. I motioned for the other two drivers to pull up and form a semicircle backed up against the ridge. 
Shooters, keep a lookout. Doc, I might need your manual dexterity. I popped open the lid of the GPS unit on my snowmobile. And then, in the wind, I smelled something. Something rotten. Something disgusting. I looked up, and I could see the shape of a herd of snowmen outlined in the wind-whipped snow. Whatever I smelled wasn't snowmen. Snowmen are made of nothing but fresh snow. They're peaceful and harmless. These snowmen were hunched and deformed, and I could smell them from here. Kringle, salty nuts, I yelled. Cover your faces, they're yellow snowmen. And that's when the first polluted snowball whizzed past my ear. It crashed against the ridge behind me, and when it cracked open, it let out a dizzying odor. Cambo and Longshot opened fire immediately, and I could hear Cambo's rocks all round hissing and fizzing when it hit. Next to me, hunkered down behind the snowmobile, Jenny fumbled for her own rock salt ammo. I fired a few blind staple gunshots over the edge of the snowmobile, hoping to at least keep them at bay. But yellow snowmen are too stupid to be scared off easily. Hawkeye popped up and shot three quick rounds. I don't even need to listen for the impacts. I know how accurate she is. Three up, three down. Longshot and Cambo are still firing, too, and I risk a peek over the edge. A wet, nasty yellow snowball splashed off the edge of the snowmobile. But through the haze and the snow, I could see that we were outnumbered. Badly outnumbered. Shade leapt up out of cover and spun around, decapitating a yellow snowman who was reaching out with its bony stick arms and embedded her ice axe into the torso of another. She tore the blade out, kicking it with her ice cleats, and both of the yellow snowmen crumbled into stinking piles of snow. Two more of them crowded towards her, and I pumped one full of staples. Chunks of ice and yellow snow sloughed off one of them, and it fell. And then, without warning, a pair of antlers burst through the other. With a shake of its head, the reindeer that I hadn't seen through the snow until now tore the yellow snowmen apart. We were surrounded by the sounds of reindeer braying and the stomping of hooves. The sound of the wind was drowned out by the sounds of yellow snowmen being trampled by a herd of wild reindeer. What the heckerdoodles? asked Hawkeye. I don't know where they came from, but I don't think I've ever been happier to see a herd of wild reindeer, I said. Through the flurries of snow, a single point of red light bobbed closer to us. A dozen reindeer-shaped shadows were silhouetted behind the glow of a bright red nose. The one with the nose stepped on a broken carrot nose in the snow. It snapped loudly. Yo, he said, what do we have here? It's a load of mother and elves out in the snowstorm. Don't you tinsel toes know it ain't safe out here? We're on a mission. Thank you for your assistance. I wasn't sure where this was headed, but we didn't have time to play. The storm wasn't getting any better. We have to get going. Time is of the essence. You hear that, fellas? Time is of the f***ing essence. Well, maybe we should let them go play in the snow. He stepped forward, his red nose illuminating everything around us in a hellish glare. Red snowflakes danced through the air between us. Or maybe you could do something smart. You scratch my ticks, I scratch yours. What do you mean? I mean I'm sick and tired of chewing on branches out here in the snow. I mean I'm sick of being left on the outside. It takes a mother f***ing explosive to get through the walls of your workshop. You see this here nose? This nose is a genetic abnormality. It ain't natural. It ain't normal. You see anybody else out here with noses like this? No, you don't. I figured I'd let him build up some steam and get to the point. Interrupting him to ask for details would just waste time. Time we couldn't spare. Every reindeer here in the North f***ing Pole who has a nose like this one is descended from one reindeer. And every f***ing one of them except for me is living comfortably in the workshop, eating real f***ing food and rolling in the dough from the royalties to that stupid pop song. Well, Grandpa Rudolph liked to dip his bright red nose in a few stockings he wasn't supposed to. Here I am, Jimmy the Red-Nosed Reindeer. I ain't legitimate, but I legitimately got a red nose. I legitimately got a right to the family money. I legitimately got a right to a lot of things I ain't got out here in the snow. So, I guide you to your f***ing destination, and you tell the fat man that I'm out here, and I deserve more than what I got. He's the only one who can force my fat family to share their f***ing wealth. You live through this? You help me out? Sounds good to me, I said. And it did. I never liked Rudolph's family. From the way they act, you'd think the sun shines out of their cinnamon buns instead of their noses. They could afford to be taken down a peg or two, especially if that's what it takes to save Christmas.